Hello and welcome to World War I, the Alliance System. So World War I was very significant to our world history. During this war, four empires will cease to exist, several smaller countries will emerge, and over 40 million people are going to die. And sure, even today, that, that's a lot of people, but remember that um, in this period, the population was only half of what it is currently. So remember, we've also just come out of the imperialism era. We know that all the world powers are seeking glory and power, and they're racing each other to it. And up until now, they've done so relatively peacefully. I mean, sure, we had like the Boer War and the Crimean War, but those were baby wars compared to what is about to happen. And overall, they've mostly just focused on themselves. However, this is all going to change during World War I, or as they called it back then, the Great War. And this is mostly because it was the biggest war that had happened so far, and they had no idea that another one was coming. So they called it the Great War. However, in my personal opinion, the reason you should call this the Great War is due to the fact that this is the age of the mustache. I mean, seriously, take a look at this guy. And this is like a JV mustache. This isn't even like varsity level. You're going to see some really, really epic mustaches. And how can you not be interested in a period of history where this is the look they choose to go with? You just can't. You have to be interested in it. So let's, let's continue on and let's talk about the people who grew mustaches like this. So there are several reasons that we were brought to war, but we're going to focus mostly just on one of them, the alliance system. Now, the alliance system in Europe was basically all of the countries making deals with each other. Hey, man, you've got my back. Yeah, have you got my back? Yeah, sure. So let's talk about who was on whose team because they had very distinct groupings, okay? So first on one side, we have Russia. Russia has a pretty serious military. They've got a lot of land. Things are going really well for Russia. And this is making everybody nervous, okay? So they begin to kind of want, they want to be part of the party. So they start making some alliances. The first one they make is with France. And this is in 1892, and they make the treaty called the Franco-Russian Military Convention, okay? Then Russia kind of buddies up to England, and they create their own treaty called the Anglo-Russian Treaty in 1907. And then France and England enter into their own treaty in 1904. And I am going to butcher this name because I don't speak French, but it's the Eulalie Cordial in 1904. So, but one thing that I do want you to notice, okay, is that some reason when France and Britain get together, crazy names, okay? If they're with anybody else, it's all good. But when they get together, crazy names um, ensue. So we have the Eulalie Cordial. And then when all three of these treaties kind of come together, we have um, a, a th three-way treaty. And we call this the Triple Entente because, again, we need to have a complicated name. And so this meant that if any of these countries were in war with another major power, the other two would join them and back them up. So it gave everybody a feeling of security, okay? However, there were a few other little kind of mini alliances that you need to know about. Russia is kind of sympathetic to some of the little guys. And so the one that we need to be concerned about is Serbia, okay? Serbia, if you remember, had broken away from the Ottoman Empire, Serbia and Greece broke away and were the first to kind of establish their independence. So Serbia is a relatively young country. And Russia is basically like that older kid that looks out for that younger kid and they don't want him to get bullied on the school bus, okay? So this is important. Also important is that Britain has a similar relationship with Belgium. This relationship was formalized way back in 1893 when they signed the Treaty of London. So see, English on their own, they have simple names. When they get with French, weird. So the point is that Russia and Britain do not want their little buddies to get bullied. And this is going to come into an importance later. So just hold on to that fact. Now let's look over to the other side. Let's start with Austria-Hungary, okay? Austria-Hungary is a long-standing empire, and some of that empire makes up the Balkans. If you don't know what the Balkans are, you don't know where the Balkans are, you don't know what that is. Go look it up. It's important, okay? So some of Austria-Hungary's empire includes the Balkans, or at least they've taken some of the Balkans into their empire. And this is important. Remember it for later, okay? And just like everybody else, they want to know who's on their team. They're a little nervous about Russia. So first they get into an agreement with Germany. And basically this agreement is that if war with Russia begins, they will back each other up, okay? 
So Russia, they're all worried about Russia. Okay, this treaty formally is called the Dual Alliance, and it goes down in 1879. But then eventually they talk Italy into joining the party, and they come up with a nice simple name for their group, the Triple Alliance. Okay. However, spoiler alert, Italy is going to cross over and join Team Complicated Name, the Triple Entente, and fight on that side. So for now, they're over here, though. Okay, so this is Triple Alliance on one side, Triple Entente and Friends on the other. Okay, so all of this is in place prior to any war. Okay, no war has happened yet. They just have lots of plans just in case. They are exchanging BFF necklaces. They are making friendship bracelets. Okay, everything's good. Everyone's getting along. However, they are ready for when stuff does go down because it will. You know how like when nothing's happened for a while and you're like, I know something's about to happen. Things have been too peaceful. That's what's going on here. They all kind of know that something's going to happen. And they're all kind of also building up their militaries. And so it's almost as if they kind of want to go to war. There's this feeling that Something about war is glorious in this period, and they all kind of are itching for one. So it doesn't take much to set one off. So what is it that sets these two alliances against each other? What was the drama that lit the fire? Well, the drama that lit the fire and set these two groups against each other was an act of terrorism. This act of terrorism was the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, who, if I may say so, has a awesome mustache. And um, it's his assassination that kind of sets some things in motion that allows for this alliance system to give us some trouble. But that's a story for another day. Be sure that um, you understand this system. You know who's on whose side. If I were you, I'd write it in my notebook. Get it in your head. And if you have any questions, just write them down. I'm happy to answer them tomorrow in class. Um, thanks for listening and have a great evening. Thanks.